because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. Leg out. Hey everybody, who wants to be a millionaire? Um, it's funny, I was driving right now and I just saw a coyote. And I was driving yesterday morning and I saw a coyote. Um, now what does that mean? I think that means if I was a Native American Indian, I would say if you see two coyotes in a row, that means I probably will not see a coyote for a while. Just the law of average um no no deeper spiritual meaning sorry and it, it's funny so a lot of times you go to funerals and um i was at one uh, a, lot, uh, a couple years ago and uh real exciting and there was a guy uh, one of the relatives you know, probably a nice guy i don't know um usually you see people that you've never seen before it's uh, it's like a family get together um and uh he's saying oh that he's an eagle now and he's talking to whomever and he's looking down on us and <laughs> we're kind of looking up you know and uh i i i think well sure that's that's that sounds good and, and it's nice to have people say good things but it does you about as good as um you know just taking a rock and, and throwing it in the ocean you know it sounds good but it doesn't do anything it doesn't mean anything and uh, the rock's going to lay where it's going to lay. You can say all you want about, you know, what that does or what it's going to do, but uh, it's not going to do nothing. You know, the, your, you, the eff efficacy, to, uh, to say a word that um, <clears throat> I could normally say when uh, uh, I've been up for a few hours, uh, it's hard to say when you just woke up, of, of, of all that when you're dead is nil you know every everything you're going to do in the afterlife you have to do before um at least according to the bible and and if we're if we're not going according to the bible well then it's not supernatural um and the only thing that's going to save you after your blood pressure goes to zero is something that's supernatural in that i say that um Every city within a thousand miles of Jerusalem had its uh, future and, uh, or sorry, past, present, and, and future foretold how, how the city was going to be built and how it was going to fall. And there's supernatural things to it. So it, it, it kind of passed a lot of litmus tests. It's not just a, a promise. And I say without that supernatural element, it's just tradition or. Um, hearsay and a lot of religions are like that not to beat up on religion uh, I'm just saying that that's that's nice like uh, certain religions that that just have good will towards people that's it's a great way to live um, but you got to remember a lot of these religions get their belief system or, or at least a lot of their wisdom from the Bible so yeah there's a lot of great stuff that uh, the Bible spews out, but the the, the most, I guess, the, the biggest part of the, the Bible is, hey, uh, we also offer this thing called eternal life, and um, if you're going to kind of leave that part out, well, then you're, you're kind of, um, you know, you're, it's, it's like going to uh, the Disneyland parking lot, you know, and, and just hanging out, but you can, if you can't get inside, then eventually they're going to um, you know, close and let you out, and can't go to the hotel and and stay there. But it's yeah, you're 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 
you like it, you're there, you're close, but you're not in, uh, so to speak. Um, probably the worst analogy ever in the history of podcasting, but the day's young. So, you know, these, they, they, these guys say things and, and, you know, I always tell people, I go, you need that supernatural element, you know, when your blood pressure goes to zero and, and how do you know it's supernatural? Not because the story sounds good or because your father's father's father told his father, told his grandson's grandson, grandson told his grandson, um, you know, w- without that, hey, you know, this is this is almost impossible for, for or actually impossible for these predictions to have come true. Um, and uh, now they came true. And it separates, you know, just these things we're talking about. And um, so when I'm when I'm at the funeral, I hear this and I think it sounds good, but you know, sometimes the truth is boring. You know, and you know, if you if you just say, hey, you know, this this person. This person knew Jesus, and uh, you know Jesus promised everlasting life. And uh, as far as I could tell, um, uh, nobody has has been um, more documented than Jesus. I mean, we could talk about Napoleon. Um, what was it Bonaparte? Uh, his he uh, what did he fight Waterloo? Stealing from uh, uh, what's his name um, McGee and. You know, we all agreed that Napoleon existed. In fact, I don't think anybody in a room full of uh, educated people would dare to say Napoleon didn't exist and he didn't fight that battle. But yet Jesus is um, much more doc, very much more documented than Napoleon. Um, there are different writers from different times, different areas document Jesus's existence. And for some reason, you know, we, we tend to, to question, oh, his existence. No, his existence was never in question. You talk to the most ardent Jew and, and they'll tell you, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus existed, but he was just a, a crazy man or a prophet or he was wrong. Good guy, but he was wrong. And what's interesting is you talk to the Jews back in the day of Jesus, and these are all historical people. They're not just a, a guy, um, you know, in, in the butt of a joke uh, yeah, that walked into a bar. No, this was a Jew like Josephus, you know, that, that, um, they have writings that have, have been brought down and, and, um, you know, we know these people existed and, um, as much as, or as more as anybody else. Uh, so to, to deny these people would be to de- deny Aristotle and Plato and, you know, the people that we do know exist because of the writings and writings of other people that um, kind of commented on them. And these people, these Jews, sec- you know, not, they weren't Christians. They have no, no dog in the fight. And they would say that Jesus, sure, he did supernatural things, but it wasn't from God. It was from Satan. And, you know, you... Ha- they're they're actually hurting the point in while they're trying to belittle him, they make him a god <laughs> in that he's doing godlike things and he's claiming to be God and um, you know they, like some people called him a sorcerer uh, the, the Romans you know he so it's he was doing supernatural thing and again that gets to my point of. When your blood pressure goes to zero, you need somebody that's doing supernatural things to save you. So, in all this, can I prove it 100%? No. But like I said, I can't. I can't prove, um, you know, Abraham Lincoln existed either. Um, but I can make a very good case, and and I sure as hell can make a bigger case for him than a lot of people that we just believe uh, emphatically uh, existed and and. Um, you know, some of us even follow other people's teachings that for, for people that um, have way less um, authority. So, in any event, um, that was uh, uh, was that from two coyotes? I got that. Wow. So um, I was I was talking to uh, to somebody yesterday, and, and we we're, were talking about um, the younger crowd, and, and I was thinking, you know, there's this kind of a, a bridge between the younger crowd and us, and, and I did a podcast on, on like, uh, communication and technology, 
a uh, very exciting podcast. In fact, I, I recommend it to everybody. And by the way, tell a friend. Um, every, you know, I get maybe, uh, I don't know, 100, 200 listeners a month or whatever and, and on, on uh, the website. And then I got, you know, a couple, uh, a few hundred listeners on, on the, the Spreaker app. And then, you know, this... So it's like if you tell somebody you grow and, and uh, it, it, it's cool because like anything else, you're a part of it. But uh, with me, it's about um, having content that people trust and then they hear. And then as a, when we move into top topics that other people care more about, um, they will have a, a voice that they trust and hopefully entertaining. Um, maybe I'll invite a clown or something on the show and juggle for you. But because uh, it's got to be entertaining, but you know, w- without somebody you could trust, it's a, it's a waste of time. Other, other than to document things, but you know, it, it's going to be a, um, another file lost in somebody's computer if it's if it's not useful and effective. But I could be more effective if I have more people because there there are people that I want to interview right now, but I I do feel like. Um, I want the body of listeners to be bigger before I, I bring that to them. Um, you know, like I say, the, uh, the people I run into in my, in my business, a lot of them are you know, super inf- influential and, and some of them household names and, you know, uh, like the Rick D's of the world and stuff. And um, I just, I don't want to be like, hey man, let's go and get on the podcast. Let's do it. And they're like, all right, who's listening? Uh, <laughs> I don't know who's in the next room, you know, because if you speak loud enough, they'll hear. And, you know, I, I do want to uh, give them a little bit of a voice um, just so it, it, uh, it, it justifies them wasting their time. I know... I could word it in a way, and, and it's fine, and, and uh, just say, hey, um, I'm going to record this, and I'm going to promote it later, but, you know, it's just, I believe in being totally honest, 100% honest, and and then you could be a lot more effective, because if, if you're not, then it will kind of radiate out, um, and uh, so anyway, so we're talking to, uh, we're talking about the younger crowd, and, and, you know, it's, I think what it is, and this all this stuff is to benefit you, whether you're in business, trying to get a promotion, trying to succeed, um, whatever it is, these things are across the board. They, they overlap um, into, into other things. Um, that's why like a, a, a baseball player, if he's really good, they wind up going into acting. They're, they're decent at that. They go into, you know, you look at Michael Strahan, he goes into uh, Good Morning America and these other shows, and and what it is is they're super focused on what they're doing. They're not thinking about all these distractions. And you know, if you're super fo- focused at football, you're going to be effective. You're gonna you're gonna dial in and you're gonna do what you you got to do. And then you you take that into the in front of the camera um, and in front of the mic, and you're gonna have the same habits, and and it's gonna help you out. So um, so we got these. Uh, you know these kids and and then you got these adults that are just as bad as the kids but uh, you know it's the opposite so the, i was thinking about it you get a, a tree and if you have a butterfly on it on a tree and you know butterflies live what a couple weeks um and they see the tree they look around their whole life that oak tree or that let's, what's a good tree uh let's say a redwood tree they'll say you know what i've been here for my whole life and nothing's changed and this is the tree has always been here so the butterfly is trying to make a judgment on everything around him based on his experience and he's only been there two weeks but if you're a turtle and you've been here for 110 years and um yes i'm talking about bernie sanders uh if you you've been here for a long time you see changes you you see how things start from seeds and grow and it, it's not that you're, you're smarter or anything else. You just know more things. And it, when, you, when you know more things and you apply more those things that you know, you become wise. It's wisdom. So for a young person um, to not have seen these things uh, and, and apply them, you don't have a lot of wisdom. The, really, the, the, the most wisdom, wisdom a young pers- person can get is to listen to an older person and really take that into consideration. I'm not saying he has to do what the old person says because the old person can be 
right in a